53, Jeff Galino. Junior number 53, Todd Samarja. And also number 50, Jamie Fitzpatrick is in there with the rotations of the guards. At center is number 68, Tony Dorenzo. And filling out the number 32, Chuck Wesson, and number 34, Al Conneris. Oh, Palak will be wearing number 11 this evening. They could not find the number one jersey, his usual number, and so he'll be donning 11 in the red. Kicking off for the Tar Bladders as he sets the ball on the 40-yard line is number two for the Tar Bladders. That's Vance Minton. A good point you made earlier, Kevin, about the fact that we usually choose to play defense at the beginning of the football game, and this is kind of unusual here for us to be receiving. And that's a short kick. It's going to go, and Opalik's going to retrieve it inbounds at the 25-yard line, and he gets it all the way out to the 35 to begin the opening half of this ball game. It was interesting how Opalik fielded that so close to the... Uh, out of bounds line. I thought he'd let it go out and take the penalty and move the Tar Butters back five for the other kick, but he chose to field it. I agree with it, Kevin, and really what happened, almost the element of surprise, everybody kind of relaxed for a minute because they thought he was out of bounds, and boy, he almost took it right down the sideline. So the Falcons first and ten. Handoff is going to be the Wesson, and his knee touched earlier than he got, so he just got to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be second down and ten. You know, John, uh, it's interesting. I'm sure most of us are taking a Cleveland game here against Cleveland very lightly because, of course, Tar Bladders are 0-3 and they don't have a strong team this year. But like you said, it could be surprising, especially because the Falcons are coming off of last week's loss. Handoff this time to Connorth, and he has a nice hole, but he's only going to pick up three. So to bring up third down and seven for the Falcons, it's probably a situation third down long that they didn't expect to be into so soon. No, I agree, Kevin, and uh, just looking at uh, Glenville, they don't look like they're very big, but they, they sure are quick, and again, this is going to give us a pretty good test, you know, in that respect. You know, we're going to have to be getting off the ball quickly, and we're going to have to be moving our feet a little bit quicker, especially on defense, I think, because they'll probably have some, uh, some people with some speed in the backfield there, and I think that's going to be a real test for us tonight. Connor in motion. Fletcher rolls out. He has Connorth, and Connorth will have just about enough for the first down. He landed right out of bounds on the marker, and so he should have the first down. <laughs> and yes, he does. So that'll be the first first down of the evening for the Falcons. Ball now resting on the Falcons' own 45-yard line. Handoff is now to Wesson, and he has some opening, <coughs> and he makes a nice spin, and he'll get another 11 yards right there, so the Falcons come back with another first down, and they are into Tarbletter territory on the 43-yard line. 10-26 remaining in the first quarter. And we're going to be more than a handful, too, for the Tarbletters, Kevin, because, you know, we run that model offense, and already they're having problems, you know, uh, defensively, not uh, physically, but just... Uh, trying to pick up uh, exactly what we're trying to do there. You know, they're going to have to make some adjustments, and I don't know whether they're capable of doing that. Fletcher rolls out, and he's going to keep this ball himself, and he's going to pick up good yardage, too. He's still going down the far sideline, and he's finally knocked out of bounds near the 20-yard line, so Derek Fletcher is going to pick up over 20 yards on that carry. We had a lot of success with that play, too, last week. You know, we put a lot of pressure on Mooney at the beginning of the ball game. Of course, they did a nice job of making an adjustment and took that particular pass route away from us. So that was a 20-yard pickup, and that'll be another first down. So the ball now resting on the Tar Butters 23-yard line. Handoff is the Connorth, and he has an opening, and he's going to get enough, close to another 10 yards. So the Falcons sluggish on the first two plays just opened this ball game up, and this is basically what everyone anticipated. Yeah, there we go. We're running right, to, right down to the safety, Kevin, before anybody's even laying a hand on us. You know, we're, we're obviously controlling the line of scrimmage, and 
I think the tar blood is better get some defensive backs ready because that's the way it looks they're going to be worn out here before too long. So the Falcons are just resting on the 11-yard line, so they will be able to pick up a first down, but the way they've been progressing, it doesn't seem like they'll need to. Wesson on the carry, he'll fight his way through for about four yards, so the Falcons will have second and six. 9.30 remaining in the first period. I'd like to remind everybody once again that this broadcast is being underwritten by the Robert Sen Studio of Photography and Komar Jewelers, and we'd like to thank both of those area businesses for supporting Austin Town Community Television. Second down and six, ball resting on the seven-yard line. Handoff is to number 31, that's Mike Zockel. And that's his first carry of this evening. And he'll get all the way down to the two-yard line. Rather, that will be the three-yard line, so they will have two yards to go for the first down. Three into the end zone. And looking across the way, Kev, we have a you know, pretty decent crowd here tonight. I was looking down below here. I don't know how many buses Glenville brought, <laughs> or if they brought a bus... <laughs> There's not too many people on this side, but really, it's a nice crowd. And normally, after we lose a football game, sometimes it drops off a little bit. That handoff is good enough for a touchdown, and the ball carrier is number 34, Al Connors. So with 8.27 remaining in the first period, Al Connors goes across from three yards out, and that is the Falcons' first score. And uh, <clears throat> got that one quite easily. I, you know, expected us to be able to move the football on, but not uh, quite like that, but... Of course, it's early yet, and, uh, you know, we've seen the same thing happen last year when we played, and we brought, you know, we jumped out to, I think, a 21, 22 nothing lead, and it seemed like we were just going to coast in, and all of a sudden we were in a football game. That's Wilkins kicking number 24 out of the hold of number 36, Jeff Scott. Both of their numbers are not what they usually were. They were missing the red jerseys as well as O'Palak, but either way, that's up and good. So that's O'Palak's sixth consecutive PAT of the season, and the Falcons now are ahead 7 to nothing with 8.27 remaining first period. And of course, we also have another big game going on in town tonight, you know, the Boardman-McKinley game, so I would imagine some people probably over there watching that, Kevin, and I'm kind of curious about the outcome anyway, just to see, you know, how strong the Boardman Spartans are. I think we have a pretty good idea. You know, we've already played Mooney, how good they are, and of course, urson has got a pretty decent football team, so uh, Boardman has yet to play, you know, a Steel Valley team, so Camp McKinley is probably their, their, their biggest test of the year up to this point anyways. Well, the Falcons are definitely not out of the playoff race, nor are they, out of the, are they out of contention for the Steel Valley Championship. Like you said, John, Boardman has a strong team, Ursland has a strong team, and because all four teams in the Steel Valley are strong, there's always going to be a toss-up, and it'll come down to the end. You may see a Steel Valley champion with a 2-1 and one slate in the Steel Valley, or maybe even less. There's such a possibility for even a tie between a couple teams. I agree, Kevin. It's you know, pretty well balanced, as it normally is. So the kickoff is a high one, not very far. Tar Butters will retrieve it on their own 20-yard line, and they'll fall forward to about the 21. So that's where the Tar Butters, Tar Butters will begin their first offensive series of the evening. And this could be one of those nights, too, that the guys uh, like to see every once in a while we could pad those statistics, Kevin, you know, uh, especially offensively. Now you can see there the way we moved the, uh, the ball there you know, on that first drive. Some guys probably uh, already have increased their yardage considerably you know they got the, the running backs and speaking of statistics offensively the falcons are third in the svc we're averaging five we're, no we have 563 yards total this so far this season are averaging 187 yards per game rushing that is And so the Falcon defense quickly stops the Tar Butters. It's a very noisy team out there. Well, we, we obviously controlled that line of scrimmage offensively, Kevin. And, um, well, that first play there from scrimmage, you know, offensively for the Tar Butters, uh, no contest. <laughs> That's interesting. I see what the Tar Butters lack in play. They make up uh. in noise. So this should be a loud game, if no nothing else. Quarterback for the Tar Butters is number nine. That's... Darrell Bolden, and he drops straight back, and he's getting good pressure, and he'll be swarmed under. A couple Falcons in on that sack. That's number 42 in there for the Falcons, John Mahakovich. 
Also number 87 outside linebacker Matt Starry. So already we're starting to see good play by the Falcons defense and also seeing a lot of different names and numbers out there this evening, which will happen as a lot of Falcons get in against the Tar Bledders. Yeah, and this is exactly what we needed, Kevin, you know, really answering that question you asked earlier about, you know, what do we need tonight? And really this, this type of a football game, we go out and move the football, play good defense, you know, and uh, really, as you pointed out, you know, that's only one loss. We've got a long way to go yet in this football season. So the Tar Butters have a third and 17 now. They're inside their own 20-yard line. It'll be sort of a reverse. And the Tar Butters are able to get past the line of scrimmage, but for about one yard more, he was knocked out of bounds by number 87, Matt Starry, in there on the stop. So the Tar Butters will have to punt quickly here after three plays, and they lost five yards. Kind of an auspicious start, I guess, huh? And speaking of statistics, it's best that we'll get back to those. We'll get back to the offensive statistics before the Falcons start. And it'll be a, ta ta a timeout by the Tar Bledders. And so there was confusion on the punting team, so we can take those statistics now. I've been dying to use them, it's quite obvious. Let's deal in the uh, Falcons' defensive statistics since they did such a good job right there on the field. We are third right now in defensing the rush, and we have given up a total of 228 net yards, and that's an average of only 60, 76 yards per game. So the Falcons are doing good in, in that department, and they, Mooney and is behind the Falcons with Ursuline, the number one de rush defender, and Boardman, the number two in the Steel Valley. But all four teams have given up less than 80 yards per game rushing. Fitch is also number three in defending against the pass. We've given up an average of 90 yards per game. Like you mentioned last week, John, if anything we've been weak in is defending the pass. And finally, the total defense, Fitch, unfortunately, is fourth in the Steel Valley, and we are giving up, on the average, 166 yards per game. But interesting to note, neither Boardman or Ursuline has played against the tough Steel Valley team yet, and we played against Mooney last week, and neither team did very well statistically. That's the punt. Wesson will retrieve it on his own 50, and he fumbles the ball, and he finally recovers it midfield, and fumbles or something the Falcons don't want to see happen. They had costly mistakes last week, two fumbles resulting in both Mooney touchdowns. That's what we have to be careful of tonight, Kevin, is things like that happening. You know, we, things just go along so easily and so smoothly, and like there, I think uh, Chuck took a, a risk that normally he wouldn't have. He normally probably would have fair caught that ball or let it hit the ground, and uh, he had a tar blotter staring him right in the face, and boy, almost coughed that up and could have been disastrous, really. Fortunately for us, we've had six fumbles this year, but we've only given up three. So that's been favorable for the Falcons. In the giveaway takeaway department total, we are plus two. So even after last week's disaster with two fumbles, the Falcons have able to maintain a positive standing in the takeaway giveaway department. And so that was offsides against the Tar Bledders, and the Falcons will get an additional five yards without having to snap the ball. To bring up first down and five ball resting on the Tar Butters 45. Handoff is the Wesson and he fights forward for three yards so the Falcons will face with a second and two. That's a good point you made about these statistics Kevin. You know, we did play Mooney and normally the week after especially earlier early in the season you know <laughs> the statistics will change considerably you know because they do usually have a very strong defense and of course a very formidable offense so uh, you know if you've played a couple non-league ball games before you've uh, run into somebody like that your statistics have a tendency of being a little bit better maybe than somebody else's and that's probably why we're down a little bit in some categories so a second down and two ball resting on the tar butters 41 Fletcher drops back he looks downfield for number 22 Rob Tofil and Tofil makes the catch the flag is out it'll be interference it'll be declined by the Falcons and they will have first down and 10 on the 10 yard line so Derek Fletcher picks up a good 32 yards through the air, so that won't hurt his standings in the Steel Valley. Right now, Fletcher is third in the Steel Valley, and he is 12 of 19 with a 63% completion rate. That is best in the Steel Valley. He has a net yardage of 127 yards through the air, and he also has two TDs, both of those hookups in the first game against Cheney. Four thirty-six remaining in this first period. Falcons once again in scoring position. 
with a 7 to nothing advantage. That ball was thrown a little bit farther, Kevin. We'd have had maybe, maybe a score. I know the defender was closing in on uh, Rob there, but still the ball was just, just a hair under thrown, and he had to come back to get it, and I think that's what actually caused the pass interference. You know, there was some contact there. The Falcons have first down goal to goal ball resting on the 10-yard line. Handoff is to Conerth, and he'll pick up maybe one on the carry, close to two possibly. So the Falcons will have eight yards stopping them from entering the end zone. And counting remaining in this first period. Dockle the lone back. Both Connors and Wesson on the wing. Handoff right up the middle. And that was number 31, Connorth, on the carry. And he's just shy of the goal line. And so to bring a third down and short. And Zocco came awfully close to getting the ball across the plane of the goal, but his knee touched before. I'd like to remind all of you out there in Austin Town that art carved class rings have been very special <laughs> for the Kamara Jewelers and it's a very special promotion and wants all high school students throughout the area to know that these rings are available at Kamara Jewelers and that is a touchdown with 304 remaining in the first period Derek Fletcher goes over from one yard out that <laughs> Well, that's, that's a little excitement there and another high note. That touchdown will give Derek Fletcher the tie with Chuck Wesson in number of touchdowns this season, both of them having four. So Wilkins will attempt his second PAT, and the Tar Butters will be drawn off sides. <coughs> So the Falcons have elected just to go for the point once again from about a yard closer. And it looks like, you know, we could be singing uh, a ball game where we're, we put maybe 30, 40 points on the board, Kev. You know, it's, we got two touchdowns already here in the first quarter. We got three minutes to go in the first quarter. And that is up and good. So Jeff Wilkins tacks on another PAT his seventh consecutive one and the Falcons go up by 14 <coughs> and it could be an evening too where everybody gets to play you know a considerable amount of football and something that again you know we haven't had the opportunity to do especially this year and then it's really in some past years you know we've always had a pretty form formidable schedule and you know we just don't play too many teams that we're going to beat by three and four touchdowns, Kevin, so sometimes, you know, it's difficult to get, you know, some of these, you know, young men in that don't see a lot of uh, playing, or get a lot of playing time, see a lot of playing action, and maybe tonight, you know, it'll be one of those ball games where they could get a quarter or so in. And that looks like the team what's progressing out here on the playing field this evening. Falcons already have two quick scores, 304 remaining in the first period. The Tar Bloodhouse have held control of the ball for about a minute of playing time, and in that minute, they lost five yards. The only thing that concerns me is, especially when you mentioned that word quick, Kevin, because even right here, you, they do have a lot of speed and, you know, would give them some room to run here and, you know, they could break one uh, for a quick score on us. Well, the receiver for Glenville bobbles the kickoff and he's dropped quickly after that. And he's going to be stopped by number 29, Chuck Campbell. So the Tar Blooders will start on their own 15-yard line. Not only are the Tar Blooders having trouble generating offense, but they're starting deep in their own territory as well. Let's set up the defense for the Falcons that is on the field. At tackles are number 79, John Polish, and number 72, Trent Maskell. The nose is Ben Burton, number 77. And the outside linebackers are Matt Starry, number 87, and number 53, Todd Samarja. And five gets the completion there. That's the receiver for the Tar Blooders. 
That's Andre Hicks, and he's going to pick up about five on the play. He was knocked out of bounds by number 22, Rob Tofil. I also see out there for the Falcons defense, the outside linebacker's number 42, John Mahakovich. So he's out there for the Falcons. The secondary for the Falcons is Chuck Campbell, Rob Tofil, Toto Palk, and Derek Fletcher. Inside linebackers are Don Hauser and number 63, Jeff Galino. And Galino's in there on that stop right there. Tar Butters are able to pick up three yards. Also number 87, Matt Starry in on the stop. Ball carrier was number three, Craig Johnson. I think Glenville looks a little bit better at this series of downs, Kevin. They're moving the football a little bit, and uh, of course, we can't relax again, and of course, some football teams have a habit of doing that. You know, we scored twice quite easily, and you come out and have a tendency to get a little bit complacent, and hopefully that uh, doesn't happen to us now. So a third down and short for the Tar Bladders, 153 remaining first period. Handoff is to number 36, Demetrius Turner. And he fumbles the ball, and the Falcons have recovered. So they will start now for their third drive inside Tar Butter territory at the 28-yard line. So misfortune for the Tar Butters and a little fortunate play for the Falcons. That was close to a first down, too, I think, Kevin. They made pretty good second effort, but then while making that second effort, you know, somebody, I think, grabbed onto an arm or the football and forced them to cough it up, and we recovered deep in their territory. Falcons will start out in another good position. 126 remaining, first period. Fletcher hands off the Connors, and he returns a favor to Wesson, and Wesson has nothing but goal line in sight, and he's finally dragged down at the five-yard line. So quickly the Falcons punch a hole through the Glenville defense, and they are in scoring position. And we're doing just about anything we want now with a lot of success, and you know I think it's just going to be a long evening for the Tar Blooders, and uh, again, the kind of night that we... Uh, we want we need to have anyways after you know last week's loss glenville is 0 and three but they do have a tough schedule they have seven road games which is a lot for a team and i can see that this is not one of their most memorable games right now handoff is the wesson and he is close to the goal line he'll be shy of about a yard so it'll bring up second down goal to go ball resting on the one yard line it could be a tough year kevin they've got seven road games you know, usually if you can then end up with maybe five, you go 50-50 there. You know, that's uh, that's pretty tough. But you got seven of them, you only play three at home. So the clock winds down here in the first period. The Falcons should be able to get this last playoff, 29 seconds remaining. And the Falcons' next road game will be in Brook, West Virginia. That's after the Maslin and Ursuline game. And so that's a touchdown across the goal line goes number 31, Mike Zockel, his first score of the year with 19 seconds remaining in the first period. It looks like they're going to be a very cooperative guest, too, Kevin. I mean, they could, this is uh, probably the best start we've had in quite some time. You know, we put three touchdowns on the board in the first quarter. You know, we're just not used to seeing that kind of offense. And, of course, Glenville uh, right now is, does not look like they have a very... Uh, formidable defense. So Wilkins will be back on the field again to kick. He's been out here a lot this evening. Might have to watch that leg doing all this kicking. And once again, we're able to draw the tarp letters off. So that'll move the ball ahead. So Wilkins will be one yard closer again. And the Falcons will elect the kick once again instead of trying for the two-point conversion. Mm. So number 36. Jeff Scott will be holding. He's usually number 10, but doesn't have that jersey tonight. Wilkins' kick is up and good. Another powerful kick. So the score now is 21 to nothing in favor of the Falcons. <coughs> like to remind everyone in Austin Town that if you don't know what to get that special person for Christmas, how about a priceless memory created by Robert Sen Studio Photography? Call Sen Studio today and find out about their Christmas, Christmas specials. That's the Robert Sen Studio Photography, 799-2015. The old photographers, huh? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have Ken here this evening to read these announcements. He does it so, so much better than I. 
Really? <laughs> I never noticed that, Kev. So Wilkins will kick off. Tarbletters have three deep to receive, and he squibs this one to an up back. Tarbletters already have their best field position of the evening. <laughs> Thanks to our onside kick. They'll start on their own 38-yard line with 13 seconds remaining first period. And I kind of wonder whether that was done intentionally or that was by accident, Kevin, because, you know, we really haven't been kicking the ball that well, but still they haven't done that well, you know, fielding our kickoffs. We've kept them inside the 20, not, on, not the 30, but inside the 20-yard line. And that was a penalty against the Tar Bladders, so they don't have their best field position this evening. It's going to go back 15 yards. So they'll start on their own 25-yard line. Quarterback is number nine, and that's Daryl Bolton. And he won't get a chance to get a playoff in this quarter. <laughs> so that'll be the end of the first period here in Austin Town with the score of the Austin Pitch Falcons 21, the Cleveland Glenville Tar Butters, nothing. And seeing that the Falcons have scored very well this evening, Let's refer to our SBC stats and see where they stand. I thought we were due for another commercial there, Kev. We'll get to that in a second. So, <laughs> we don't have team scoring statistics, so we'll just have to pass on that one. Also like to remind Austin Town business businesses, you too can be a Cable Channel 19 television sponsor. If you'd like to have your business mentioned here on Cable 19, become an Austin Town Community Television Program underwriter. You'll be helping keep <laughs> Channel 19 on the air. At the same time, make your business known to over 12,000 cable subscribers in Austin Town. So please, area businesses, help underwrite Austin Town Community Television and support the community. Ball resting on the 25, Tar Blooders quarterback drops straight back. He has a receiver over the middle and Hauser makes a nice hit, but the Tar Blooders gain eight yards on the play. Again, they're starting out here looking a little bit better than they did, you know, as we pointed out in that first drive, Kevin. They're starting to move the football a little bit and as I pointed out here a minute ago, I hope we don't, you know, relax here. And because uh, again, the old momentum switches again like it did last year, and we could find ourselves in a football game again. So second down and two for the Tar Blooders. They are now on their own 34-yard line. Falcons look like they have a stun on, and in comes number 29, Chuck Campbell. But the Tar Blooder gets loose, and they pick up a first down and a good 10 yards more. So now they're resting on their own 44-yard line. So one. So the Tar Blooders have exploded right now on two consecutive plays. And they do, as we pointed out, have, you know, a lot of quickness and speed, Kevin. So it's going to be a good test for us defensively. You know, they get a little bit of momentum going again. And, uh, you know, especially in the, as we said, you know, the, the speed department here. You know, we did have a, a difficult time during the scrimmages with teams that had some quick backs. And, uh, again, you know, we're seeing that tonight. So, uh Defensively, we, we still may get challenged. The officials call for a timeout. And the officials are going to talk to the Austin Fitch High School marching band, who is playing awfully loud here and probably disrupting both teams. However, the band plays quite well when they play loud. I didn't realize that was in our game plan, Kevin. That's not, not a bad idea. Because, uh, you know, if you notice, they're taking a lot of time with the line of scrimmage, and I think they are trying to call some audibles. You know, I noticed that uh, during their first drive, and, uh, again, with, with all that noise, I, I'm sure they're, they're probably having a problem hearing some of the uh, signals or changes in place. The Tar Blooders have first down and 10. Ball on their own 44-yard line. And up on the reverse is to number 5, and that's Andre Hicks. 
and he's able to pick up three on the play. <coughs> Tarboters trying to use some of their speed to get around the corner of the Falcons. God bless you. So to bring up second down and seven for the Tar Blooders. The voice of the Falcons just sneezed and... Falcons now are using four down linemen. Have four backers, linebackers. Bolden looks for his receiver, but the ball hit the ground. So that will be incomplete. There seems to be... And that was called complete, but that ball had hit the ground before. But we are not intended here to comment on the officials. They are doing a nice job at that game. So to bring up third down and four, ball resting on the 49-yard line. So the Tar Blooders are now perched to penetrate Falcon territory. So that's number three on the carry, Craig Johnson, and he's able to pick up three more yards. So to bring up fourth down and two, and the Tar Blooders will have to decide what they're going to do. They've just entered Falcon territory for the first time this evening. Ball resting on the Falcons' 48-yard line. 9.21 remaining in the second period. <coughs> Official timeout, and... It was an equipment timeout for one of the Falcons. They got the situation in order. So to bring up fourth down and short, Tar Butters are going to go for it. Handoff is to number 35, and he gets the first down. And that ball carrier was number 25, rather, and that's LaShawn Powers. So he's able to pick up four more yards and get the first down, so... The Tar Blooders are starting to mount a drive right now. Ball resting now on the Falcons' 44-yard line. And we've got to stop things right now, Kevin. They're getting something going here offensively. And, oh. and that was a mixed-up play, and the ball is still loose, and it's still going, and finally the Tar Blooders are able to recover it. I think that was supposed to be a pitch-out. I think it was pitched a little bit too high, and... <laughs> Of course, here they are back with uh, not poor field position, but they lost uh, about 15 yards, I believe, Kev. And that will hurt them immensely right now. That was number 42, John Mahokovich, outside linebacker, in there trying to recover that football, and he brought the Glenville quarterback down. Falcons, interesting, are using a four-down lineman defense tonight. They are sending our other outside linebacker out on the wideout. It's a pass across the middle, and it is, incom it is complete to number 12, Byron Pope. So he's able to pick up 15 yards, but it'll bring up third down and 10 now for the Tar Blooders. I'll tell you what, Bolden doesn't throw the ball too bad. Kevin, I think, you know, the thing that really always scares me, even though I'm not involved in the coaching end of it anymore is just the fact that I see all that speed out there and he does have a decent arm and it won't take much for their, uh, one of their wide receivers to get behind somebody. That was a well-executed slant pass across the middle. Bolden had a nice shot there to his receiver. That's number three on the carry, Craig Johnson, and he's going to pick up close to first down yardage, almost a pickup of nine. So this is starting to get very interesting. The Falcons' defense is starting to have holes in it all over, and this is still our starting defense in the ballgame. I think maybe we have a morale par problem down on the field. I don't think the Falcons are taking this game too seriously. And then again, that's what happens. You know, we're even up here finding ourselves, you know, joking a little bit and uh, having a good time. But, uh, you know, the thing is, you, you, you always have a tendency to relax out there. Again, as we pointed out, you know, when things come so easily to you. You know, we just haven't had a real problem or a real test, you know, from the Tar Brothers, especially defensively. And, of course, you know, uh, this is what happens. People go out there and expect the guy next to him to, to get the job done. And really, they're not doing anything fancy. They're just coming at us with some dives, and uh, they threw a couple look-in passes. Of course, we're giving him a lot of room defensively as far as the secondary is concerned because of all that speed. So they're going to try and throw underneath until you know we stop that. But uh, we've got to get something going here defensively because even with, though we have a three-touchdown lead, you know they're right now threatening. And uh, again, we don't want to give them anything to get excited about. 
That was number 63, Jeff Galino, the injured player. In comes number 62, Stefano Napolito, to take his place as inside linebacker. And the Falcons make a good stop there, so they're able to regroup. That's 80 Hauser in that stop. Also number 62, Napolito. So on his first play of the evening, he gets a tackle. You know, injuries may be a problem here for the Falcons. We have several injuries. Rich the Chalk, Jason Kosa was injured. Sean Scott was injured last week. And both our fullbacks and linebackers, Jeff Powers and Matt Marakovich, are out this evening. They're not even dressed. So Napolito comes in to cover there. So with Jeff Galino down, that's three linebackers we've so far lost. We don't know the extent of Galino's injury, and hopefully it isn't that serious. Second down and 10 for the Tar Blooders. Ball on the Falcons, 34. Bolden drops straight back. He's looking downfield on the sidelines. Good coverage there on the outside by number 11, Todd Opalik. So he had that covered all the way. And there they try to get it all back with one in one play, Kevin. They threw the bomb, which, you know, again, we expected to see sooner or later. They got away from what they were doing. They were thrown underneath, and maybe they thought, you know, that we might be, you know, maybe playing things a little bit tighter there as far as the secondary was concerned. They try to, you know, get a quick one and sneak somebody behind us deep. So the Tar Blooders now have third down and 10. Obviously a passing situation for them. We may see a trick play uh, such as a reverse. Two wide outs both sides of the field. Bolden drops straight back once again. He looks across the middle. And he has his receiver, number five, but he is punished on the reception. Andre Hicks is hit by Fletcher and Opala, and I thought number 80, Don Hauser, was going to have the interception there. He saw the quarterback's eyes all the way, but he slipped when the ball was released, and so the completion is made, and the Tar Blooders have a first down ball inside Falcons' 20-yard line. And then again, you know, you hear the name Bolden, Kevin. You may not remember, but I'm sure maybe the voice of the Falcons over there does. You know, the bold name in Cleveland, you know, especially in basketball, they had two or three brothers and uh, that were both good football and basketball players. And, of course, you go way back, and the Browns had a guy by the name of Bolden that used to be a pretty decent running back for them. But uh, up to this point, I'm really impressed with his uh, ability to throw the football there. He's been right on the money now just about every time he's put the ball up in the air. He has. He's been doing a nice job of commanding the offense out there. He's definitely the leader on the field for the Tar Blooders. And what we've got to do defensively now, and I think you pointed out, Hauser was, you know, really he had the right idea there until he slipped, but we've got to start getting our linebackers back in those passing seams. You know, it's pretty tough for you know, the secondary, uh, you know, to really pick one of those off. You know, we've got to get some good underneath coverage and take away some of those throwing lanes, passing lanes he has, and, you know, I'm sure we'll make some adjustments with our linebackers. like to remind everyone that this Austin Town Community Television rebroadcast is a presentation of the television production class of Austin Town Fitch High School in association with Armstrong Communications, the Austin Town School Board, and the Austin Town Trustees. If you are interested in donating anything to Austin Town Community Television or your comments, they are always welcome. Mail your comments and donations to Austin Town Community Cable. 4560 Falcon Drive, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515. And the Tar Butters will lose three on the play. And it was a slipped up play, so the Tar Butters now face second and 13. They've hurt their se themselves several times now, Kevin, with, you know, miscues. You know, there was a poorly handled uh, snap and of course, a bad pitch out they had earlier, and they kind of hurt themselves as much as we as we've stopped them, I guess. Bolden drops straight back once again. He throws the ball right into the hands of a Falcon defender. That was 29, Chuck Campbell, and he must. His receiver was Andre Hicks, but he was way downfield. Bolden just threw that ball right to Campbell, but it went off his hands, incomplete. I thought he went colorblind there all of a sudden, Kev. There wasn't. A white jersey around anywhere. I didn't see one. We had four red ones over there. They were all open. I guess he figured he'd throw one. To <laughs> Campbell was running, running a nice flat pattern there, but <laughs> it was, unfortunately, he was the defender there. <laughs> so Bolden drops straight back once again. He has lots of time, and he throws the ball up the middle again. And there are Falcon defenders all over, and we are missing our opportunity at a lot of interceptions here. That's right off the fingertips of 22 Rob Tofill. 
Yeah, he just put that one up for grabs, and I thought we had a pretty good shot of picking that one off, but uh, just went off somebody's fingertips back there. Tar Butters will go for it now. Fourth down and 12, ball resting on the Falcons' 20. Didn't seem from the kickoffs that they had a very strong kicker, so they will go for it here. 5-10 remaining in this first half. Bolden drops straight back. He releases the ball quickly. He has a receiver in the corner of the end zone, but it's way over his head. Tofil must have misread the coverage there because the receiver broke for the flag, the corner of the end zone, and he was wide open. You know what they did, Kevin? They've been running that post pattern, you know, the look-in or slant pattern quite well there, and all of a sudden I think he gave a little inside move and went back to the corner, and uh, he had Rob going the wrong way. Fortunately, Bolden, that was not one of the better passes he's thrown because if really if he would have underthrown him by five yards even, they'd have had a touchdown. There was uh, really nobody within. I think Rob was probably maybe about seven, eight yards, if that, behind him. So the Falcons will ring, regain control. Wesson is still going. He's tripped up and finally brought down after a pickup of 12. So the Falcons quickly return with the first down, and they are now on their own 32-yard line. 4.58 remaining in the first half. Yeah, tar Blooders haven't done that poorly offensively, Kevin, but still defensively, they're just uh, they're not even coming close to stopping us defensively. And again, it is a very difficult offense, as we pointed out before, to defense, especially if you don't see it that often. Tar Blooders using a lot of stunts out there. There are a lot of men close to the line of scrimmage using only three defensive backs. And there, one of the defenders got a bit too excited there. He's undoubtedly on a stunt, and he's offside, so the Falcons will gain a quick five and still have first down. Yeah, it looks like they're just putting people in all the gaps now, coming with a bunch of people, Kevin, hoping to maybe cause some confusion you know, up front, maybe hope that we make some mistakes. But I'm sure I know what we're going to do. We're probably going to maybe try and trap them real quick or probably go and work on the outside again. Wesson in motion. Fletcher hands off to Connor, and he has some room, and he's all the way out close to midfield, so that's a pickup of 20 yards for Al Connor. He's already scored once this evening on a three-yard dive in the first period. Picks up himself another 20 yards right there. So in all likelihood... Falcons were able to mount a drive here and knock off all four minutes that are remaining here in the first half, and they may go into the locker room with a 28 to nothing lead. Fletcher rolls out, and he releases the ball downfield, and that's Scott on the reception, number 25.